my name is Paul Grogan and welcome to another Gaming Rules Review. In this video I am going to be telling you what I think about Crown of Amara, which is designed by Benjamin Schwer, published by Pegasus Spiel in 2018, although it seems to be only 2019, which I'm starting to hear lots of things about this game. So before I jump into the review, I wanted to say a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without the support of my patrons, this kind of video would not be possible. So thank you very much to all of you for making this possible. This is a game which was voted on by my Patreon supporters as one of the two games that I would review in the month of July 2018. And I've been a bit delayed because I've been ill and I've been off to Gen Con and everything else. So it's a bit delayed. Apologies for that. But here we go. I'm going to crack on with it now. Crown of Mara. I really like this game. Let's get that out of the way right from the start. Now, I didn't actually go out of my way to pick up a copy of this game. This, this is a bit unusual. Um, the publisher, Pegasus Spiel, were launching a new range of games, the Undo series, and I was really keen on finding out more about them, and I struck up a, a discussion uh, with one of their people, and basically they gave me some review copies, uh, or they gave me a review copy of one of the Undo series, and while I was there, he said, do you want a review copy of this as well? And I hadn't heard anything about it. I think this game came out at the end of 2018, but it went pretty much under the radar. I hadn't heard of it, I looked at it, I thought, well, it looks like a Euro game, I'll try it out. Um, oh boy, do I, am I happy that I tried it out. Um, some friends of mine played it before me, and they basically said, it's a pretty dry, themeless, boring Euro, but it's, it's, it's okay. Um, there's, you know, it, it, it's nothing special, it's nothing new. So I went into it with that expectation, and it actually, it, it, it fulfilled that, but also I enjoyed it a lot more than, than I thought. Now, I could cover the theme, and I normally do cover the theme of the game, but to be honest, I've played this game four times now, uh, twice multiplayer and twice solo, uh, and I had no idea what the theme of the game was. I had to look up the theme of the game, which is mentioned in the rule book, um, in order for me to do this review. And I read through it, and it was so, it was so bland and you know non-existent as far as the uh, game goes that I'm not even really going to mention it. Kingdom, do stuff, whatever, get points. What makes the game interesting is you actually have a score track here and you have two different scores. You have your building points and you have your citizen points. And at the end of the game, which is six rounds long, it's the player with the highest of the score in which they've got the lowest in. So you need, you want to be increasing them both. Now, your citizen points normally starts off at zero. Your building points will start off at a certain amount depending on certain conditions. Every starts on the same. A very, very quick overview of the game. Six rounds. In each round, you will play three cards from your hand. Uh, in the normal version of the game, you will shuffle your nine cards and you will get three of them, and they will be the three cards that you play. Players take it in turns, and on your turn, you choose one of your three cards and you place it into one of the three positions. You then do the card action, the movement action, and some other bonus actions. Movement action is basically you move either one, two, or three spaces round one of the rondelles. There's two. There's the countryside here, and there's the town here. Your piece starts off, you have a councillor on each. This is set up for the solo game. You'll basically move one, two, or three spaces round, depending on which space you choose. Then you'll perform the action where you land. The countryside is generally all about getting resources or converting wheat into bread. And when you move around the city, you will be spending those resources to get books, uh, to, to trade for gold, to get signet rings, um, to be, get building points, to do all sorts of stuff in here. And it's a combination of these two areas which basically will get you points. Now, there is a variant mentioned in the back of the rule book, which is what I use when I'm playing multiplayer. So instead of getting three of your cards at random and then having to choose from those, you actually get, on round one, you get all nine cards. So it gives you a lot more choice in terms of strategy and tactical you know, choices of what you want to do. Uh, you will play those three cards, they will then disappear. In round two, you will play another three cards. Then in round three, you'll play your final three cards. At the end of round three, you get all your cards back and you'll basically do the same again. Six rounds in the game. The game plays really quickly. You're looking at probably about uh, 60 to 90 minutes. I mean, I can play a solo game of this in 30 minutes. It's probably 45 minutes for a two-player game and probably, probably an hour and a half for your first game multiplayer, but an hour and a quarter. One of the things that I like about it is it packs quite a lot of punch in a short space of time. The decisions that you make Whilst it might seem very simple, oh, I've only got these three cards and I choose one card and I choose where to play it, 
that opens up a whole host of possibilities because you can move either counselor and you can actually plan ahead. You know that you're gonna be moving one and then two and then three. Sorry, you're gonna be moving one, two and three, but you can do it in either order. So if you really wanna end up back where you started because you've got lots of craftsmen there, for example here, uh, you probably wanna do something in the three, one, two, three, and then play something in the one to move the one and activate the area with lots of your craftsmen in. But then that leaves the two area so do you move the two area here and just get resources or do you move two there? Oh, but you wanted to go here. Lots of different choices um, for, for such a simple choice, but actually it opens up a whole host of possibilities. And it means you can plan as well because you know your nine cards. You know which cards you, you are gonna see over the course of the game and you can plan which one goes in the one, which one goes in the two, which one goes in the three. So I really like that. Components wise, absolutely no problem with the components all fairly standard stuff. The wooden pieces are nice. Uh, the cards are good quality. Um, yeah, no problems with the components whatsoever. The card stock is, is good and thick. Uh, the rule book uh, was pretty much fine. Um, there's one minor typo on the back page. It says individual, individual instead of individual. Very, very minor. The only quibble I had with it is gold is used as a wild card and a resource. Uh, and that's only mentioned in the market section where you get the gold. It should have been in a in like a big box or something saying, no, gold is a wild card. Apart from that, the rule book, I mean, it's a fairly simple game. So, uh, but it, it is a good rule book. Graphic design, absolutely no problem with the graphic design. It's all very clear. All of the icons are different enough. Everything in the game was really clear. All of the iconography of all of these cards and everything about it was just really clear. I really like that. And the rule book has a full list at the back of the rule book about what every single card does anyway, but you hardly need to refer to that once you've, once you've played the game once. Uh, Cause as I say, it, it's very clear. So, so far, all I've been saying is positive things about the game. I always try to cover negative things about the game and I'm struggling to find any with this game. To be honest, this game, uh, I'm, I don't really want to say this game blew me away as if this is the best game ever. This is not the best game ever, but this is a great game. Um, it's just really good. And as I say, it was a bit of a surprise for me. It isn't a massively popular hit. People are not talking about it and raving about it everywhere like many, many other games. Um, but I think it deserves it. Now, when I had played the game and I did start going online and saying, oh, just play Crown of Amara. It's really good. Lots of people popped up and said, yeah, it is really good. So I know I'm not, uh, you know, on my own in thinking it is a good game. And it was nice to see that there was a lot of support out there for it. If you want to see a game being played, I've actually done two live videos uh, on my YouTube channel. So they are available now, although they went out live, they are available now. You can see me playing through a solo game. Um, if you want to get an idea of how it plays, obviously you're only seeing me playing. You're not seeing obviously the competition within the other players. And that's one thing that you will be looking at when you play this multiplayer. You'll be going, oh, well, wait a minute. You know, Dave's here, he's, he's, he's moving his building markers up. I, I really need to, to do that. Keep an eye on what the other people are doing because obviously you just need to beat them. Um, variability in the game, there's a bit. There isn't that much. Uh, these boards, you actually randomize them. So it's not always the same layout. They do come apart a bit like a jigsaw. Um, but that doesn't make much of a difference. A lot of the game is set up exactly the same every time. Uh, there are these advisor cards and there are 16 of them in the game and you only use eight of them. You only use the eight A advisors. So that's slightly different. If you're going to get lots of advisors, you want to probably look at what's available. And then there's event cards. Every round an event comes out and they, it gives everybody a bonus or it changes the rules slightly. It's a little bit. Um, but... I don't find that much of a problem. Um, I mean, I go on about games that are massively, you know, have a huge amount of variability. Um, and that's, you know, that's a good thing. And this game doesn't have that much, but still perfectly fine. Really like it. Other tiny little things about it that I really like, whenever you get one of these nobility cards, it's got a picture of somebody uh, being crowned on it. And what you do is you actually tuck it underneath your thing here. You can just see, there you go. So you're actually wearing the crown. And then as your nobility rank increases, you will get fancier crowns and they go on there. It's just a nice little touch that the designers, graphic designers, whoever have thought of uh, to put it all together and it just makes the game really enjoyable to play. So I think that's everything I want to say about Crown of Amara. 
great game. I will never say no to a copy of this and I'll be taking it along to my local club as well uh, and playing it with, um, with some people that are relatively new to gaming because although it's not particularly uh, complex, it is obviously a step up from uh, a lot of the very much the introductory games. Um, but yeah, that's everything. So as mentioned at the start, thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters for making these reviews possible. Uh, if you like what I do, you like the content that I create, please consider supporting me over at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. And until next time, take care and thanks for watching. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com